Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamid Youssef. Upon the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the honorary president of the Royal Charity Organization, to provide humanitarian aid to the Yemeni people as part of the Restoring Hope operation and under the patronage of the representatives of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Royal Charity Organization, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the RCO in cooperation with the Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan Foundation, prepared a large shipment of relief aid to the Yemeni people. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his humanitarian initiatives, affirming Bahrain's keenness to stand by the Yemeni people to ease their suffering under difficult circumstances. His Highness also hailed the support of the organization receives from the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. He added the organization is working on preparing shipments of humanitarian and relief aid to the Yemeni people to contribute to the provision of basic needs of medical and relief goods and materials in many cities and governorates. The Royal Charity Organization Secretary General Dr. Mustafa Sayyid said that this humanitarian initiative comes from the directives of His Majesty the King and is part of Bahrain's contribution in the Restoring Hope operation. The director of the Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan Foundation said that the timing of the joint humanitarian relief aid with Bahrain reflects the keenness of both countries' leadership to ease the suffering of the Yemeni people. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Al Mullah, affirmed that the reform project of His Majesty the King was formed for a democratic experience that depended on the separation of authorities and proved a success. He pointed out that the advancement made through the four legislative terms contributed to enhancing the progress march to build a better future for the people of Bahrain under justice, freedom, and equalities, as well as maintaining human rights. Al Mullah added that Bahrain is one of the first countries to acknowledge the International Day of Democracy that was approved by the people since His Majesty's accession to the throne in 1999 and the announcement of the reform project. He highlighted that the kingdom is preparing for parliamentary and municipal election in the coming period, confirming the democratic march of the kingdom. He added that the organizing of the elections is vital under the goals of the reform project and a fundamental pillar for the progress and stability of the society. The Shura Council praised the democratic march of the kingdom under the reform project of His Majesty the King, which is considered one of the most important democratic models that allows the people of Bahrain to practice their roles in making decisions. The Council praised the cooperation and coordination between the executive and legislative authorities, which achieved the desired aspirations affirmed by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to provide high living standards for the people of Bahrain. After a week of going back to school, the Ministry of Education succeeded in organizing it through providing seats, books and free transportation as well as necessary maintenance for the number of schools in addition to implementing development projects under the initiative of improving education in the country. The Ministry praised the role of the Concern Committee in the preparation period through organizing with the Ministry of Works, Municipal Affairs and Urban, Plan Urban Planning to reconstruct 25 schools. The Services Department issued circulars annually for dealing with air conditioners to all educational departments which in turn circulated to all schools in order to ensure the, the operation of all air conditioners in schools. A high-level delegation of former heads of state and Nobel Nobel Peace Prize laureates visited Bahrain to learn about the kingdom's sustainable development efforts and progress. More on this report with Shogun Hamad. A high-level delegation of former heads of state and Nobel Prize laureates visited the Kingdom of Bahrain, many for the first time, to learn about the Kingdom's sustainable development efforts and its growth in all fields. The delegation included the former President of South Africa, Frederick William de Klerk, the former President of Poland, Lech Walesa, the former President of East Timor, Jose Ramos Horta, children's rights activist Dr. Kailash Satyarthi, and Under Secretary General and former Executive Director of the United Nations Human Settlements Program, Professor Anna Tibajuka. During their visit, the delegation met with significant figures and visited significant places in the kingdom. They met with the Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, multiple times and learned about his efforts in achieving political, economic, and social development in the kingdom, as well as his constant interest in consolidating the values of peace, coexistence, and love among members of the Bahraini society. Thank you for your historical visit to our country. We are very happy to have you here, and we thank you for what you have said 
to the media, to the what you who you met today and yesterday, and you have tomorrow also. This is a visit we will always remember with thanks and uh, appreciation. I was very interested to listen to the Prime Minister. I fully agree with him that the smaller nations of this world has a role to play, that there's been too much dominance by the big countries and the st strongest economies, and that the smaller nations should come together and form alliances and work together in order to ensure a better life for all their people and the security of all their people. What the Prime Minister is doing is exactly my philosophy, my approach. The Prime Minister, he is a great guy, he is a visionary, he is a true uh, leader uh, with a lot of moral authority and a lot of compassion and respect for humanity. We had the privilege of, of, of meeting the Prime Minister and you know, and some of the leaders. And uh, what impressed me was how incredibly gracious and, uh, and friendly and, and uh, open they, they were. Uh, often leaders, uh, uh, leaders of countries often uh, appear very prideful and arrogant, but the leadership that we met here emphasized their passion to serve the people, their, their openness and their enthusiasm. The delegation were given an official tour of the Bahrain National Museum and were briefed by the President of the Bahrain Culture and Antiquities Authority, Sheikh Amey bint Mohammed Al Khalifa, on its sections, which contain a collection of artifacts and artistic models depicting the civilizations known by Bahrain throughout its history. They praised the outstanding level of the museum and its content, which embodies the civilizational depth of Bahrain and its people, lauding the museum's architectural design reflecting the Bahraini identity. The delegation also toured a number of historical heritage areas, cultural landmarks and vital developmental projects in the kingdom, accompanied by the Minister of Cabinet Affairs Mohammed al Mutawa and His Highness Sheikh Hassan bin Isa Al Khalifa. This included Bahrain Fort, the Tree of Life, Khalifa City and Gravity indoor skydiving. The delegation gave lectures at the Bahrain National Theatre and the Sheikh Ibrahim Cultural Centre where they spoke about coexistence in Bahrain and the cohesion characterizing the Bahraini community, lauding the kingdom's efforts to foster human rights and ensure optimum services and care for citizens and expatriates. By the end of their visit, the delegation agreed that the kingdom of Bahrain is a model that the rest of the world should emulate, and many of them expressed their desire to return in the future. I'm very impressed with Bahrain. It's my second visit. I've been here in 1995. It's truly, I think, a stable country and a prosperous country. I'm impressed by the way in which they've diversified their economy with oil reserves going down and going away. And it is a shining example of what can be achieved by a small nation in a small country. It's extremely uh, important that uh, more should be seen and said about uh, Bahrain's uh, unique experience. Uh, for uh, the rest of the world to appreciate uh, these uh, oases of uh, uh, tolerance, of inclusion, of uh, respect of all other faiths. I would love to spend more time. I would love to stay here. I feel like home here. The people are so nice, so, so warm, so passionate, so lovable. I'm very impressed. In my opinion, the Kingdom of Bahrain has accomplished a lot in terms of globalization, much more than even Europe and the rest of the world. I have been searching for solutions for the conflicts we have in Europe, and for this reason, during the meeting with His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, I listened intently to make use of it. I have truly enjoyed my time in Bahrain. It has great culture and great people, and I wish I could stay longer. I believe that Bahrain's uh, investment in education, investment in health, in, in, in health of its people, investment in infrastructure, investment in um, in the rule of law, investment in creating a diverse economy. All of these things bode well for a stable, secure future in which people can flourish. This is Shogh Mohammed reporting for Bahrain International.